I'm seeing now more and more a lot of the, what you just said, the intern-based contracting professionals. It seems like a lot of the people that were, I guess, the ones grandfathered in are retiring. Do you see that same trend? Yes, um, quite a bit, actually. Yeah. There was a very, very heavy um, amount of the baby boomers generation right. that are essentially retiring. And and they're really leaving a pretty big hole to fill. Um, I agree. Which is good for which is great for the people of my generation because we're getting promoted faster and, and things like that. But um, it could be tougher for the next wave of, of people coming into federal acquisition. Yeah, I see that. Cause I mean, every, uh, and again, I started doing this back in 2007. Um, and so everyone at that time that I dealt with, they had been a contracting official for 20 some odd years. And now, uh, you know, 20 fast forward 2019, Almost every office that I work with now in the federal government has interns. Almost every office, like 90 plus yeah. percent, they all have interns working in there. And there's a lot of transition. And then the older people, like you said, the baby boomer generation, I guess they all just retired at the same time. Yeah, that's what it feels like on, on my end as well and what I've seen in the workforce. Wow. Now, you called it, uh, you said the acronym, DAU. What did you call it? How did you say it? Uh, yeah, DAU. But no, you said it, you said it like together, like DAWI or you said it. Oh, uh, do we? Uh, the Defense Acquisition Workforce Improvement Act. Ah, that okay. essentially was the basis of why DAU exists. Uh, do we? Uh, that's how you say it. Okay. Okay. And do we? Uh, um, that's the certification. Yes. Okay. That is the uh, the certification courses that we that we teach essentially. Okay. So, I teach uh, Con ninety. Con 170 and Con 280, those are about a mixture of level one and level two uh, certification courses for contracting. So, so let's let's talk about, uh, we'll get back to that, but first, how did you get involved with uh, Defense Acquisition University? How did you, how did you go from, what did you do before that, prior to this position? Sure, so um, right around the, uh, the 2008 timeframe, I was a, I was actually a a teacher at a middle school and high school and at a private school um, living in South Florida. And um, I, I had also recently finished my master's in business administration. So um, because it was 2008 and the uh, housing crisis and all that stuff and the economy was just in you know terrible downturn, I was fortunate enough to, to get a government job. Okay. So I really started all the way from the bottom and um Got a job at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio, where I was doing like flight simulator contracts and I was doing source selection for a pretty big $450 million um, deal. But um, so I was essentially doing the the performing level of the contract administration type stuff. Uh, so I did a few different rotations in offices, bought a lot of different things, all the way from toilet paper to major weapon systems and uh -huh. F-35s and things like that. And then usajobs.gov, I, I saw a job for uh, an instructor position at, at DAU. And I was really interested in that, and I, I applied for it, went in and interviewed, and I was able to get that position. But that actually makes sense, coming from a teacher background, that you went to back to what you liked or what you enjoyed the most. Yeah, um, I didn't find out until afterwards that they give additional points for already having some instructed, oh, um, some teacher so experience. Right, right, right. Like that, so. Oh, so that worked out in your favor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, so the government put this in place in the '90s. I get you said the act was in the '90s, and then they started uh, requiring it for everyone in the 2000s. Now. Is it mainly for contracting officers and contract specialists, support people, or who else can all participate or sign up for courses with Defense Acquisition University? So um, we have many different uh, certifications in, in DUIA. Um, we have, like what I teach, I teach the CON courses, which are entirely contracting because all of my background is contracting, uh -huh. but we also have everything from program management to engineering to life cycle logistics and every different type of, every different member of the acquisition team can come to DAU to get training. But we also do allow contractors to, we do allow contractors to come to Defense Acquisition University, but because of the need for federal government employees to come first, uh, the contractors are really lower down on the, on the list. Mm -hmm. 
So okay. it's difficult for a contractor to come into a DAU class. I've, I've actually never had a contractor in one of my classes, but I've heard that it can happen. And I know other instructors who have had a couple. Okay. So it's not prohibited. It's just the, the need is so great right now for the, uh, for the department of defense that we, you know, that comes first. That's the priority. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Now I know that you also, they also have online learning and online modules. Yes, we actually have quite a few. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on the dau.mil website, which um, if you're interested in something, you can just go to that website and go get educated. And there's so much stuff um, for people to just learn and take continuous learning modules and receive continuous learning points uh, to be able to kind of self-help uh, without an instructor present. Okay. So then we probably have a better chance of doing something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, now you said it's not that expensive, uh, but we're talking about the track of someone wanting to actually become a contracting uh, professional, right? To become like certified so they can do this for a living. But if we, if we want to take random courses, anyone could sign up at any time for the online classes. Exactly. Okay. 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 That's fair. Uh, do you have in mind anything Specifically, like, is there a, say, curriculum for how to navigate the small business programs? Do they have, like, a separate curriculum for that? Um, so you- there are certain positions uh, at DAU that, that focus specifically on small business. Okay. And I know ours at, at the uh, Capital Northeast region, ours ju- just recently retired, and I'm not sure if they have hired a uh, person yet. Uh, for that need at the at the DC region. Okay, okay. And the reason why I ask is I was just wondering if there a lot of times what and again from my experiences of of working with uh, smaller companies they want a structured curriculum. So if I recommend to them just to go online and take random classes, they're gonna the next logical question is gonna be right. Is there a track? Right. Is there uh, an actual course or a track that I can follow? And that way we're taking a series of classes to lead us to somewhere. Yeah. And that's another problem that I've heard um, from industry is that they don't really have a capability to educate their their staff the same way that right. that, that the federal workforce does. Right. So um, I have heard of the need where, you know, contractor for the development of some type of contractor equivalent uh, program for for DeWia certification. Yeah, and, and, and that's interesting because think, and I agree 100 percent. By the way, because think about this way, DeWia, and I and I'm and I have your catalog of courses, right? So you have, oof, yeah, I mean, I don't know, hundreds of courses. But imagine if that the buyer has all of this information, but the the, the contractor that's offering the services has none of that information at their disposal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if, if, they, if the buyer needs all this type of certification, this type of education in order to buy the products or services, the acquisition, it would it would make sense to me. Right. That the contract should have at least of a minimum understanding of providing that level of service to the government as well. Right. So then that way we're both exactly we're both talking the same language. It's, it's like one person speaking one language and the other person speaking a, a foreign language. Yeah. yeah. And from my experience, what, what I've seen happen is um, the private sector will kind of hire, you know, seek a, a federal employee that they find and have a good relationship with to kind of work with them and um, represent their, their business and, and make sure that they can, they can sell things in accordance with uh, the federal acquisition regulations and, and the defense regulation supplement as well. 